is there a different approach to a two-leg series compared to a knockout game in the playoffs? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, that's one goal isn't the end-all, be-all. Um, you know, whether it's for or against, but uh, particularly against. Uh, if, if you go down 1-0, you don't have to you know, throw the kitchen sink at, at the game to try and get back in it. You have to uh, make sure you lock up defensively and, and, and keep it at the one, um, knowing that you give yourself a chance to go home and, and get a good result and go through. So I, I think that's probably the biggest difference. And is there anything in particular you all learned from last year's game that you can apply to the playoffs this year? Uh, just that there's no guarantees. You know, there's no guarantees. We're going to be able to go out there and score, so we need to be solid defensively. There's no guarantees that you're going to win your home game um, or that you're going to advance because you're the top seed. I mean, we've already seen that this year. Uh, most of the bottom seeds have, away teams have advanced. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can use that experience. We also feel like we've played two big games recently, uh, both of which we haven't played well in and, and hopefully have learned from um, so we can apply those as well. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. The, what is the most important lesson you all have taken? from that? Is it intensity? Is it execution? Is it? It's both. It, uh, it, it's the whole, the whole complete package that uh, you know, we need to be much, much better in big games if, if we want to have a chance to, to hoist the cup in a few weeks. And uh, that's what it's going to take. I mean, we saw the intensity of the games the, the last two days. Um, you know, we watched Columbus and DC the first half together and uh, you know, it, was, it was intense. and. Uh, you know, you can see the passion out there, and we need to make sure that we, we bring that as well. Uh, we know that it's not always going to be pretty. It doesn't always have to be pretty uh, in, in the postseason. You maybe take a, a few less risks and, um, and lock up defensively. Um, so we need to do that, and we haven't done that in the beginning. Are you all doing anything during training, games, or anything like that to try to crank up the intensity in training so that you can turn it on? On Sunday? Um, no, nothing in particular because I think that the weeks leading up to those games were good. You know, I thought the intensity is always there in training. Um, you know, I think the focus has been really good. You know, I think that uh, guys understand the moment and the opportunity that we have. But um, you know, that's that's just talk and that's just training. It's we have to go out and prove it. And obviously, playing on Yankee Stadium on that tiny little mm -hmm. ridiculously small pitch. Uh, Y'all were able to get out of there with a draw. Mm -hmm. Earlier this year, it was a you know skin of your teeth type draw. Yeah. What's the key to try to play well on that thing? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's twofold. I think that uh, you have to have confidence that it's possible to play on that field. I mean, New York City does it. They don't just kick long balls. They they are able to play out and they're able to play through pressure sometimes. Um, so it's it's able to be done, and I think that they have that confidence because they've experienced it more often than away teams do. And I think when away teams get on that field and they think, man, there's just not enough space, it's too tight, and you second guess a pass and then it's not there, and uh, you turn around, you go backwards, you go backwards, and New York City presses, and it just happens over and over again. That's what I watched in, in the Philly game. Uh, whereas New York City, they see the quick opening, they play the ball, play the ball, play the ball quick. Um, you know, and it's, sometimes it's risky, but um, you know, they're able to do it. And, if they're able to do it, other teams are able to do it, we're able to do it. So, um, you know, it, it's quickly taking those calculated risks when they're there and, and otherwise playing safe, playing in behind them, um, doing what they do well, which is win second balls, you know, play up to Villa and Morales, and those guys work very hard. Uh, so if we can turn them around and, and do that to them on their stadium, that would be good. It looked like Jim Curtin had Philadelphia on their training pitches. Actually, they redrew the lines. Um, have you guys done that? Maybe not even this week, but just in the past, preparing to play them up there? We haven't, no. no we've, we've stuck to our, our normal size size field, but you know, I think that we're all aware of, of the dimensions up there and uh, the effects on the game it can have. You know, everything happens faster, but uh, no, we haven't changed that. I'd like to explore the, the big game experience angle a little bit too. Um, do you think that there is a confidence issue, and not a confidence in like rah rah, we can win this game, but confidence in one another um, that kind of weakens the unit because there may be not the confidence that 
somebody's going to get their responsibility done or get their job done, then there's overcompensation and there's just not that experience of guys playing in those big games together. Because a lot of you guys have played in big games individually, but not together as, a, as this unit, you know, with Atlanta United. Yeah, I think any time a team collectively can play in big games, it definitely helps things out. But um, I think that um, you don't necessarily have to have that. I think that with experience of playing in big games, you learn to trust your teammates and, and to have the confidence in them that it's a normal game and that you understand that there's going to be periods where it's not good or where it's tough and um, you, know, you can't let anything waver. You can't let emotions uh, play into the game or, or bad calls or anything like that. Um, you know, especially in a two-legged game. But, um, you know, hopefully the experience of last year and these games you know, has helped us and will help us come this weekend. But, um, you know, I think overall, you know, we have full confidence in each other to get the job done. And then one more for me. With it being a two-legged affair, do you think that that actually takes the pressure off of you guys? Do you guys feel more comfortable knowing that you have 180 minutes to get a result, basically, instead of 90, where it's a little more volatile in terms of what can happen in terms of a result? Of a result. Um, yeah, I guess so. Uh, I guess you could say that because, you know, you go into the first game knowing that um, you don't have to be 100% um, perfect. We don't have to win the game. You know, if we can get some away goals, uh, it would be really good. You know, our, our objective is to win the game and, and provide ourselves with a, a good advantage going into the second game. But, um, you know, I, I've advanced in these types of scenarios not winning the first game, and so you don't have to do it. Um, you know, but we want to take advantage of every minute that we have. Um, you know, the game passes you by quick, and these, these uh, experiences and um, opportunities don't last long. So, um, you know, I think every minute we're out there, we want to take advantage of it and perform well. I got two questions for me. Um, you have a couple guys that are fighting to get fully fit. Um, was there any type of like renewed focus on, on recovery this week, or was it business as usual, just kind of getting ready for like tactically for the opponent on Sunday? I think the last few weeks has been uh, a little bit more of a focus uh, since we've had you know the injury bug bite us a little bit recently. Uh, I think that there's been a little bit of a deload in some of the training sessions. Um, and making sure that guys are fit and fresh come the weekend. I think that's first and foremost at this time of year. Um, when we do train, it's, it's a little bit shorter and more intense uh, to try and keep the legs fresh and, and, and guys fit. Uh, so that's definitely played into it. And quickly, I mean, you're the captain of this team. Just individually, what are you thinking about in order to motivate this team if you guys go down or if you're, you, end up in a game where it's not about tactics, it's not about touch, it's not about skill, it's about just who wants it more. Um, what are you thinking about? How do you approach that type of situation as the captain of this team? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, I, I've always been one to more lead by example. I'm not a, a big rah-rah, mm -hmm. um, pump you up type person. Um, so, you know, I need to go out there and do my job flawlessly. You know, that's what I expect. Um, I need to go out there and and make sure that myself and other guys with experience in, in the back especially set the tone physically uh, from the beginning of the game and make the rest of the guys on our team and the other team aware that, okay, we're ready for this. Uh, we're going to be ready for the physical challenge of, of the playoffs and, and we're not going to back down. Uh, so I think that that's an important message to send. And, um, you know, I think that we talked about it after the Toronto game that uh, – you know, if you go down a goal or if you go down two goals, um, you still need to stay focused. You need to stay um, level-headed. You know, we talk about ups and downs and uh, throughout a season, but it's throughout a game as well. And uh, you can't lose focus or concentration. Um, you know, it's fine. It's natural for guys to be upset um, after you give up a goal or two goals, and especially in these big games. But the only way you're going to get yourself back into the game is if uh, you keep fighting and keep doing the things that have gotten us to this point. So.